Well, this is the first stage of an agroforestry process. And it doesn't look like much. You might be like, where's the forest? But this is the very beginning. So what we're doing here is in the very first phase of the process of regenerating a cow pasture. Um, you might wonder why, what's wrong with a cow pasture? I mean, really, what is, what is wrong with it? Well, we're in a subtropical forest. You can see remnants of it here in the background. Um, and this field was cleared of all the trees and all the forest, and of course all the wildlife went with it. Um, and then it was used to simply raise cows for about 25 years. So what happens is in the subtropical forest, unlike a, a meadow or a natural savanna, when you remove all of the canopy of the trees, uh, there's no real snowfall winter here. Those of you North Americans or Europeans are probably really unfamiliar with what this is like. And in our winter, we simply got hard drumming blitzkriegs of rain. When the rain hits the grounds without the canopy to interfere, without like tree branches to interfere with the falling of the drops, all that really hard gravitational force hits the ground makes a mud out of the topsoil and washes it away. The other uh, negative factor about simply having a pasture in a subtropical forest, or it should be a subtropical forest, is you don't have any tree roots that form a lattice to also hold the topsoil in place. So all your nutrients are just simply getting washed away. So what we're doing here is this is phase one, and it is, it's, it, it's so exciting because we've got We've got a couple trees already planted. We've got about a hundred trees planted on what is here about a hectare of land. And uh, we've got palms. There's a lot of citrus here. There's quite a few varieties. But now what we're doing is this is what's called the pioneer phase. And in the pioneer phase, what you do is you find a plant that mimics basically a tall weed in nature. Weeds are nature's pioneers. What we're using as our pioneers are plantains and bananas. This is the foot of a banana tree. It's just a big root clump. We already have the holes. We're putting them in the ground. This is my new doggy, Coco. Isn't she sweet? And um, so we've got about 700 of those here that we're planting in addition to the trees we've already planted. This is the very first phase, guys. It's just a pasture. Take a good hard look. This is the last time it's ever going to look like this. Now I'm going to walk you over to uh, another lot that's well into phase two. So you can see what that looks like. But this is phase one, starting off, planting. Okay, so here we are in stage two. And stage two of the pioneer phase is where our pioneer plants, because the pioneers are the ones that come in and, right, and pave the way for everybody else. Just like with people, pioneer plants are the same. Our pioneer plants, our bananas and our plantains, here is one growing, right? This was only planted about two months ago, so you can see they grow very quickly. The advantages of planting bananas and plantains as a pioneer species is that they have multiple functions. Okay, when we're talking about creating an ecosystem, everything in an ecosystem has a lot more than one function, multiple, multiple functions, okay? So here's the leaves. Leaves are function number one, okay? What you can do is you can chop these leaves and drop them on the ground and it creates a really nutritious mulch for the ground. It also helps to shade out some of this grass and compete the grass with the grass. Function number two is, of course, they provide food. Plantain, which is a staple starch here in South America, and also bananas, which is like a nice sweet treat and also a very nutritious food. Um, number three is that they provide shade and protection for our target species. Now the target species is when we move, we're moving into, this is actually a phase two moving into phase three. Here's a target species right here. This is a Roma Nacional Cacao. This is our target species. And you'll see that it's planted very close to, I mean, not really close, but about a meter away from the parent we're gonna call the nurse plant or the mama plant, which is the banana or the plantain. This is a very old system. This has been in use for thousands of years, co-planting these two species, your pioneer species and your target species. Target species are usually a little bit more delicate. They require a little bit of shade. They require more nutrients. They require some protection. So you can see is what we have here is we have a Romanacinal cacao interplanted with bananas and plantains, okay? 
And we also have a lot of other mixed species in here as well. We've got zapote, which is a delicious fruit, um, achotijo, which is a lychee. We've got uh, little lemon and citrus trees going on. So there's a lot of things going on in here. But our primary focus right now is growing bananas and plantains as a pioneer and growing aroma nacional as our target species. And we're growing them together. So here we are in phase two. You can see it looks a little different from the last lot that we were in. There's a lot, a little bit more interest going on here, okay? Still nowhere near completely grown. In five years, this is gonna be a forest, a subtropical forest. Um, but what it's doing is even by having a few plants here of different heights, it's attracting whole new species of birds, whole new species of insects. Every time you have things going on at different heights, you're attracting whole different groups of wildlife. Right? So this is really important that the plants are not just functioning as plants for us to sell and to eat, but they're also functioning as to rebuild the entire ecosystem here, to repopulate it with wildlife. So next step, I'm going to take you over to phase three, which is uh, our food forest, which we planted about five years ago, where you can see um, some of the, the target species actually already coming into fruition, and then it's really exciting. So you've seen phase one and two, let's go over. Okay, everybody, so here we are in a more mature agroforestry system. Uh, this is our system that's been growing for about five years now. And of course, when we came here, this also was just grass, just like the, the field that I showed in the very first video, this was all just grass and uh, with patience and fortitude and uh, a lot of hard work. Um, now we have, it's amazing, one of the most amazing feelings is when you walk into a field that used to be all grass and you're actually underneath the trees that you planted. It's really an amazing feeling. And then of course another amazing feeling is to pick the fruits from the trees that you planted. So we have this big lemon tree and full fruit now. And um, some of the advantages to a, ma a more mature agroforestry system that you won't see then in a pasture is of course all of these trees are now home for wildlife. So all of these trees here have birds nests in them, have multiple lizard families living in them. Um, we even have uh, anteaters uh, coming into our area, which we're super happy to see because they're actually uh, endangered here. Um, so yeah, so we have all kinds of wildlife growing here, half living here now that wasn't here before. And uh, here's a, a lime tree obviously in full fruit that we also planted. So um, it's great to see this. Another thing that when you have trees is then you also have support structures for vining plants. This is a chayote squash, which is growing here. So, and that needs the support of another tree. So unless you have your trees growing, you can't grow your vines. Um, one of the big mistakes a lot of people will make when they're doing a permaculture system is they try to plant the whole thing at once. But that doesn't work. You can't have vining plants before you have their support structures, and you can't have trees before you have pioneers. So we went, we talked a little bit about uh, bananas and yucca as pioneers in our last video. And sometimes you get uh, naturally growing pioneers. And here's one here. This is called the elephant ears tree. This is a natural, naturally growing pioneer. And when uh, the owners of the lands here have cows, they don't let these grow. They just cut everything that is in grass for the cows, they cut. But the big advantage to having plants like this is that you can do the permaculture technique that everybody recommends called chop and drop because you actually have vegetation to chop and drop. So you can take large leaves like this and simply chop them and then put them under your fruit trees to serve as mulch, to help suppress some of the grass from growing back, to break down into nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus to feed the soil. But please remember, you can't do chop and drop unless you have something to chop and drop. And you're not gonna get your chop and drop species, all your sort of like weedy pioneer growth, until your system begins to mature. So there's a process to an agroforestry regeneration. You can't do it all at once. Pioneers first, target species, which are usually your most profitable fruiting, uh, fruiting trees second. Then you can start to have your vines, your wild pioneers, 
And at some point, the whole system just pops all by itself. It just starts to come to life all by itself. But to get to that place, you need to have a system. So remember, if you like these videos and you find them educational, there's tons of information here on our YouTube channel, our website, www.sdbforest.com, and you can help us with our land regeneration and reforestation of the rainforest by subscribing to our Patreon channel as well. Thanks a lot.